Hello everyone, welcome to the Not Just Boxing podcast. My name's Terry and I'm here with Ash. Uh, we're here today to talk about many different subjects, but first of all, uh, we're going to talk about the pound for pound list. So me and Ash did a pound for pound list on the 7th of December. Yep, so a few months yep. ago we, uh, we saw the ESPN's pound for pound list uh, and it was trash. So we thought we're going to come up with our own and uh, we posted it on Instagram back then, but yeah, we're going to go over that. Okay, so I'll, what I'll do first, if I'll tell you the ES, ESPN uh, pound for pound ranking, what they had. So number 10, shall we start here? They had June Francesco Estrada. Hopefully I said that right. Number nine, they had Vasily Lemachenko. Number eight, Alexandra Usyk. Number seven, Josh Taylor. Number five, Tyson Fury. Um, sorry, number six, Tyson Fury. Number five, Teofimo Lopez. And number four, Errol Spence. Number three, Anoue. Uh, number two was uh, Terence Crawford. And number one was Ca Canelo. What we're going to do today is we're going to go through our top five. So Ashley's and Terry's top five and see how we differ and how we sort of uh, have the same same numbers. Compared to the ESPNs. Compared to the ESP numbers. Yeah. So Ashley, so you've gone for number one Canelo. Canelo. Canelo Alvarez. I've gone for number one Canelo as well. But do you want to explain why you've gone for Canelo? Obviously, he's the pound for pound king right now. Uh, the only thing that you could say against him is he possibly lost to Golovkin. I think he lost to Golovkin in the first fight. Mm. So for him to move up to light heavyweight, mm. beat Kovalev, mm. and then come back down to super middleweight and then beat Billy Joe Saunders, mm. Callum Smith, mm. you know, and Smith, like these guys, I know obviously they're, they're, they're British fighters or whatever, and there's been some controversy in the media. People think they're not world fighters, but Smith, you know, he is, he is amazing. You, you see some of, some of his fights, you know, he's a world-class fighter. So the yeah. way Canelo dealt with him, and you see the size difference in them. The, the way Canelo deals with all of them, uh, he's special. He's yeah. so special. He's got a chin. His de his defense is amazing. Like you, you know, you can see clips of Canelo everywhere, of just perfect boxing. Yeah, yeah. But I would say the same. I've gone for number one Canelo as well. I think the Callum Smith win does get sort of underruled. But if you see it, Callum Smith is six foot three. Canelo is five foot eight. The height difference in that is crazy, and how he dealt with him in the fight. How uh, Smith's got a great jab. He's got he's yeah. got a great lead hand. He neglected it. And Canelo was just punching that arm. He had yeah. he has such good game plans with his coach. Yeah. Uh, same with Billy Joe. And Billy... you saw his arm. Callum Smith's arm just blew up. Yeah. And you see in the fight, he says to him, "How's your arm?" And he's mm -hmm. like, "Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's yeah. got me." So yeah, mate. Fair play to Canelo taking on someone that big. And then Billy Joe. Shows he's, he's unfit. And Billy Joe. Yeah. His game plan there. Billy Joe's fit. You know, he had he, he was boxing well in the mm. fight. But again, everyone knows Canelo's going to come on strong. And he, he always does this, you know, you see Billy Joe, he was rolling quite deep, you know, and he was just rolling away and it was working, but Canelo saw it and he was timing them uppercuts and finally he connected and, yeah. you know, he breaks his orbital bone. You know, Canelo one breaks shot. bones. You yeah, know, with one shot. You, you see the, the list of fighters, you know, he broke Kell Brook's eye socket, was that Golovkin? No, that was Golovkin. Yeah, yeah. but still, he, you know, he's broken jaws. He's, it, so what he did to Amir Khan. Amir Khan, yeah, it's, he's, he's mm. a tough, fighter you know he, he's not just a boxer he's mm. he's a fighter and he's number one so so but just touching on that billy joe saunders fight uh, going on from what you said is you know he timed it but if you see billy joe saunders it was quite even quite early on wasn't it you i think it was really even got early on but i think canelo what he was doing he's just reading he's mm. reading billy joe saunders pattern he was going at that pace where he felt comfortable when he's hitting his shots making him know that he was there and then eventually when he caught him with that beautiful uppercut um that, that, that was the end of it. He obviously couldn't carry on and the corner pulled him out, rightfully so. Uh, but yeah, Canelo for me. And, you know, he's just going strength from strength. And he's even his, mo strength. his most recent win, again. You know, what a knockout that was. Hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, his most recent win was pretty good as well. Was against uh, K Plant. Yeah, Caleb yeah, Plant. Yeah, Caleb Plant, 11th round, knockout. Yeah, what a shot. And uh, do you see that? Have you seen the clip of them two talking yeah, between yeah. them? Like, it's like Caleb, Caleb Plant. <laughs> I'm needed pretty good, that, huh? <laughs> I'm pretty good. He like, needed that um, verification from someone like Canelo to say, mm -hmm. oh, I'm, you think I'm good, right? I'm mm -hmm. good. And Canelo was like, yeah, yeah. So that, again, that was quite interesting. It's just a matter of when. You know, with all of his opponents, Canelo, he just he gets there. He's patient. And, uh, you know, I'm really hoping he has a trilogy with Golovkin. I think, of course, Golovkin's mm. getting on now, mm. but he was getting on in their first fight. He was like 35 in their first fight. Yeah. What's he now, 38? 38, I, I want to say that. So, I, I don't know, I, would I want to still see that fight if it is? I don't know, man. 
I think Golovkin hasn't fought. He hasn't fought in a while, has he? No, but the last guy, he knocked him out of a jab. And Golovkin is one of my favourite fighters. I, I think if he has the correct camp, he's yeah. going to cause Canelo problems yet again. So, Okay, cool. Yeah, number two? Number two. So your number two is Alexander Usyk. Yeah, so understandably, you know, what an amateur career. Um, Olympic gold medalist, you know, turn pro, undisputed cruiserweight at what 15 fights or something not even i would say yeah maybe a bit less you know, I say. yeah he uh he just dominates he's um, and then for him to move up to heavyweight hmm. school anthony joshua hmm. rock him in the last round he rocked him a few times yeah, fight for him, but, but yeah. you know to finish strong is what like yeah. he he is he's the grandmaster at chess and when aj tried to outbox him it was a big no-no so yeah. you know for Usyk to do that he's he's definitely number two yeah. for some people he could be number one because obviously to move up to heavyweight the Cruiser only person way. to do that um there's only been a few people that can do that you know evander holyfield mm. uh, roy jones roy jones did it from middleweight yeah so he was a middleweight you had um uh, who asked it? David Hay did yeah. it as well. But not many people. Yeah. So for Usyk again, amazing. That's my number two. Yeah, great. So I've gone for Terence Crawford as my number two. Fair. I, th I think he is just he's just class. He he can't you know he, sorry he can box from southpaw orthodox. He's got so many variations to himself, and you see him now like you see him now in he's just finished a fight with Porter, and you see you know Amir Khan's camp. He's next day he says he's back in training. That dedication shows that to be at the top level, that's what your dedication you have to do. Did you and see him sparring Amir Khan? I didn't see him. What was he sparring Amir Khan? I think they've been having some sparring recently. Oh, I saw. Oh, okay, interesting. So that would have been that would have been good sparring. Khan Brook, we'll get onto that. Yeah, we'll get onto that. Um, so yeah, for me, Terence Crawford. And you look at his CV. You know, he come first his world title was against at lightweight, and he beat um, the Scottish guy. Ah, oh, what's the Scottish guy's name? I can't, remember, I can't remember his name, but he came over to Scotland and he and he, he beat him. Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns and Ricky Burns is a good, tough fighter. And the way he dealt with Ricky Burns was was amazing. And since then, he's just gone, uh, you know, stronger his, and stronger. His boxing IQ. He's got a good team behind him. Like you yeah. see, his strength and conditioning Boy, coach. Because yeah. Crawford's quite old, was he? Thirty four now. Crawford's thirty five. Thirty five. Yeah. yeah, but you know, he's still performing at the top of his game. He is still at the top of his game, and he's, you know, and he's he's performing great, and he's undisputed lightweight champion. Sorry, light welterweight champion, and now he's obviously gone to, um, he's gone up to welterweight a few years ago, and I'm still waiting for that fight against Errol Spence. But I was about to say this, I'm but a lot of fans think Spence will beat him. You know, it's a very 50-50 no, fight I think, in well, a lot of people's Spence, eyes. Yeah, what Spence has gone through, I think, if you look at his the car accident he had, uh, he was supposed to fight Manny Pacquiao, but he had the eye injury. So these sort of little things take stuff away from a fight you see Kel Brook you know as much as I like said is Kel Brook the Glofkin fight took a lot out of him mm -hmm. um, some of the other fights he's had the Errol Spence fight took a lot out of him all this chips away at a professional career so you got to see is Errol Spence the same fighter that he was when he was before these injuries that he did go through well, but he I, look, he I, I think Crawford I, I think, think Crawford when Spence come back after his car crash and he boxed was it Garcia Garcia he boxed yeah. he looked brilliantly he looked good he, he, yeah. he, he boxed beautifully yeah uh, but um, a Garcia is different from a uh, from a Crawford yeah different I levels I know but um, then I think they're both on the world level and you know instead of us talking here like everyone just wants to see it like, yeah I want to see it I want to see it but for me it's that Crawford at this stage will win that fight I, I, agree. I agree Um, so your third you've gone for Terence Crawford yep for all of your reasons, exactly yeah. that. Uh, I, I think he's his boxing IQs. It's not un, it's not underlooked. It's uh, it's just amazing. You know, he's got a great IQ. Uh, him being a switch hitter and for him to just adapt in a fight, it's you can see him in each round. Just he can just come out completely different. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, in the middle of the fight, out, out of nowhere, he would start boxing com like completely different rhythm. How many fighters Throws, can do that? Yeah, and you know. I can't even have one rhythm. Like, you know, <laughs> like, he's, yeah, he's amazing. For me, yeah, number three. Okay, lovely. Uh, for my number three, I've gone for Alexandra Usyk. Rightfully so. I've, you know, I've gone for, I've gone for him as my number three. Um, his win over Anthony Joshua was huge. It just showed me that, mate, this guy's got more to his, you know, more to him than what we thought. He, he's an Olympic champion. He, uh, what else did he do? He won the cruiserweight undisputed title in I think like fourteen fights. I think it was something crazy mm -hmm. like that. And he stepped up. We thought he can struggle at heavyweight as well. And yeah. even his fight with Chisora, 
he got roughed up by Chisora, yeah. who who is you know Chisora's had a load of losses in that, but even for him to move up a weight weight category, and he wasn't even primed into it. Obviously, when he boxed AJ, he was mm. ready, but you know he was in the transition when he fought Chisora, mm. and even though Chisora gave him problems, he showed heart. He had a great chin. Yeah, you know he he boxed brilliantly against such an aggressive fighter. So yeah, who who had the right strategy? Shall we? It's worth saying he had a good strategy going into that, whereas. Uh, Joshua wanted to box, which I can understand why. I can people don't say so why did he box um, in high? I can understand why he did that. He wanted to prove that he that he's an he's an elite level fighter. He took up chess, you know, to prove that he can get a strategy. These sort of things. Um, well, with the rematch, let's talk about this. Obviously, the rematch clause I think is happening now. He's not being paid. AJ is not going to be paid to step aside. It looks like White's going to fight Fury, and yeah, um, AJ will be rematching Usyk. Yeah too massive fight. I think that's the way it should be yeah yeah, yeah. and then obviously the winners of them finally fight each other yep um, obviously White deserves his shot but back to AJ Usyk do you think Usyk wins the rematch no 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 I think Anthony Joshua is a is a clever man is a you know he's learning on the job he's got all the attributes to beat someone like Alexander Usyk and I don't think he. Well, I think he went into that fight with the wrong, with the wrong mindset and the wrong strategy to try and box him. And he had very, very bad corner advice from an amazing coach. But unfortunately, I th AJ, I th I think AJ's he was mixed, corner. I think he was getting mixed advice in that corner. I think Ron McCracken's amazing. Yeah, I think he's an amazing yeah, coach. And I think he's getting a lot of, lot of the. But that wrong corner in that corner in was nearly as bad as shouting lions every round in yeah. Russia. Yeah. You know, that, that's, uh, it wasn't that bad. But still, yeah. <laughs> for, for you to be in a heavyweight world title fight mm. against Usyk and mm. to be given that corner advice, I, I don't know. It's, it, was, it, was, it was sad, you know. So AJ now is I think AJ on. Need, I think he needs a new, new voice in the corner. He's had this Ron McCracken since he was 15, 16, since mm -hmm. he turned, I don't know, 18 or whatever, he started boxing. Um, since so, Team GB. Yep, so now it's an opportunity for him to go and explore learn probably new skills but also new he, ways he of doing took skills. On, I don't know if you remember Angel uh, and he had about four coaches in the corner yeah but so, that guy he is special what yeah. coach he he worked a lot with Rubio that when we was in Miami boxing um oh. he 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 oh. was working with Rubio for a bit was he really but oh. his method of teaching boxing is is perfect you know the work he did with Isaac Chamberlain uh, a few years ago maybe now um just the work he's doing with current fighters He's a very special coach. So I think if AJ, I, I think he's still got him as one of his coaches. Look, he hasn't announced his, his team yet. Yeah, but I, I think he'll still be there because he, he's, he's, why would you get rid of him? Um, but yeah, after all of that, I think uh, if AJ picks the right team, wh where is he? Is he? Was he in Dubai recently? He's been Looking traveling America, like that. I, he, he's he's America. I think he'll get an American coach. I think he'll, he'll go there, but I know he trains all over. He's training in Dubai. He's training. In he can train where he wants, can't he? But unfortunately, he needs to get a routine, something quick. But, we'll go, but you don't know what he's doing in the background. He's. Uh, we see he's really quiet. So he's. Uh, I'll put money on it. He's out there training hard now, learning strategies, learning techniques. How? But I think he needs a bond with a certain coach. Maybe he's doing that to be ready. I think yeah. he's got a team in place. I, I think hope he's got so. a team in place at the moment. It'd be silly not to. I'm a bit of an AJ fanboy. Yeah, AJ's brilliant. Yeah, how can he, you, he can you bought, not respect him? He brought boxing back for a lot of people. Before Tyson Fury, before yeah. these other boxers. AJ, boxers AJ Klitschko, everyone that was watching that, it mm. was one of the most exciting fights ever. And, yeah. you know, for most people that have seen a lot of fights, you know, it's a bold statement. But I just think, yeah, AJ, he, he's, he, he can definitely be a three-time world champ. Obviously, his comeback with Ruiz was good. There's no reason why, if he has the right game plan, he can beat Usyk. Yeah, so that's exactly what I said. Yeah, so I, Anthony Joshua for me, um, I, I think he goes in there with a better mindset and a better strategy and more hungry. Maybe a bit heavier. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Could well, you, you don't want to put too much weight on because we saw before he tires. Mm -hmm. he could, well, with so much muscle mass, obviously you, t you could tire yeah, quickly, at, right? At six foot seven, carrying yeah. that much six, six. lean muscle mass. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would, I would suspect maybe he he want to prepare for the later rounds so maybe come in lighter come back leaner and that, that'll help him in, in, in the later rounds of the fight so who's number four so for you you have gone for Anue yeah yeah you know Inoue. again Anue he could be number one you know you see what he has done 
he is an absolute weapon. Like, I'm pretty sure it's his dad that trains him. Uh, he's he is a killer. A new like no one. What? How much does he weigh? How much does he weigh? Is he bantamweight? He, d d was it? Yeah, I think he's a bantamweight. You know. He, for such a small guy, has so much power. So much mm. power. And you see all of his fights. He dominates the best in their division. He has mm. taken over. Uh, I, I think Inoue, he, he deserves more respect because he's not English or American. He's overlooked, you know, because cause he's an Asian fighter that doesn't, you know, he can't go be in front of a camera talking. Um, it, it's a shame. But well, he's signed by ESPN. Yeah, you yeah, know, he, he's, he's, he is marketable. Luckily, his boxing sells. And that's why he's he is getting coverage on Showtime and everything. So... Yeah, I think Anuay, he could e very easily be above fourth place for me. Mm. He's textbook. He's, book. he's a killer. Brilliant. Amazing. He could, that is true. So for me, for my one, I've gone for Tyson Fury uh, for, for number four. I think if you see since his comeback, even before his comeback, he had Klitschko win, uh, which is huge win. You know, I, I remember I was writing him off for that fight massively. I was like, when's he going to get knocked out? <laughs> did, the fella, fight. did fail a drug test. Yeah, I think there's been a, quite a few things in the news about this and before. If you read up about it, people can find out about it. But obviously, I, I, I like to think that he's a clean athlete, which I, you know, which it, I would go It would with. be nice to think, but he did fail a drug test. And I don't know. For, for me, that is a very big thing. Yeah, yeah, if, if that is the case. But for me, I'm going by boxing merit. Yeah, okay. I'm going by what I think and about the his comeback, boxing. of course. The comeback was amazing. That. Like, how about he come back? Let's talk about his comeback. You know, Klitschko, he had two, three years out. He had his mental health problems. How much weight did he lose? He lost t He lost uh, 10 stone, wasn't it? Because it was t a Ricky Hatton weight. when it, 10 and a half stone or something. He lost when he came back. So imagine that, 10 and Madness. a half stone. And credit to Ben Davison, by the way. What, what a coach. To even... I didn't really know Ben Davison, of course. No one really did back then. I thought maybe he was just like a, a personal trainer that helped him shift the weight. Mm. But what a coach. You know, for him to be able to bring Tyson back... Mm. to go against Wilder, a, a knockout artist that's, mm. you know, that's, you know, he's slept a lot of people. Um, All like, of his opponents apart from um, uh, Tyson Fury. Except from Fury. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, uh, yeah, great coach. I think Fury's come back, inspirational for everyone. Mm. And for that, you know, that alone, without even winning a world title again, is amazing. Mm. Yeah, so it, I agree. So just touching upon that, I've seen a comeback. He had two or three fights he had. And then um, they he got, the best, he got, were they? They weren't the best. Uh, he got offered the Wilder fight. Everyone thought he was crazy. He said, don't take the fight. Even his dad, he's like, yeah. don't take the fight. And he's like, no, I'm ready for him. I'm ready for him, uh, which is crazy. You know, he, he took that fight. His dad said he wouldn't talk to him if he took the fight, but he still took it, trained hard. And what a fight. I think, again, it was another situation where I was waiting. He's going to get knocked out any moment here. The, way, the way he got up. The way, after, after being caught by that shot, was it in the 10th round? No, he got caught in the 7th round. No, he went down the, the, the other then in the 12th round the 12th yeah he got knocked knocked rocked hard in the 12th round he come back and he come back stronger yeah he he won the round after nearly yeah. being slept yeah you know for that yeah so and and he was robbed he was robbed a draw you know mm, even with the knockdowns yeah anyone that even if you're a wilder fan fury blatantly won that by at least two rounds mm. Yeah, including yeah, the knockdowns. Yeah. I guess it was a home, what they call a hometown decision. Of course. Um, and that's what's a bit worrying maybe with some fights coming up that we're going to talk about. But, but the good, I guess a good thing for Fury, you know, on the back of that, he scored a multi-million pound deal with ESPN. I think worth over 100 million or something like that. Crazy. So but for th him, th it's not draw, about the money. You know, for him as well. Of course, to, it's about, about the money. To be robbed about the that money. draw. No, 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 no. But like at that level, the money's going to come. You know, you put a post up yourself saying, do what you love, do your passion, work hard. And yeah, the money follow, follow the vision, the money, or just follow. But you, and that's what you like to think, but I'm just saying, on the, he followed his vision, and on the back of that, he secured that deal. So it, that shows that it works, right? Mm -hmm. um, and but, then the second fight with Wilder. Yeah, 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 so the second fight with Wilder was crazy, man. So he changed his trainer. He, he Cronk Jim. Cronk Jim, he changed a completely different style approach. He went to a front foot style, um, and that worked for him. Obviously, and he showed, knocked him a few times. He showed he can bang. And for a lot of people that think fighters might not have punching power, a lot of fighters that box on their back foot, they're not trying to hurt you. They're boxing you, you know? When you see Fury there go from jabbing and moving on his back foot to coming forward, hitting you with heavy shots. 270 pound man coming forward. Putting that much, you know, mm. it's, it's incredible. So yeah, for him- What does Wilder weigh as well? 
Oh, he, he weighed in at like two twenty. Yeah, imagine like, a two seventy man against a two twenty. Sorry, two seventy against a two two twenty. So that there was something like twenty five kilo difference about that. I think. Yeah. So you get that much pressure, that much force on you, is is got it's got to it's yeah. got to you got to come unstuck at some point. But the reason why Fury's not up there for me, I think he can beat Usyk. So a lot of people that are thinking, why is Fury? Um, why is he not above Usyk on my pound for pound? It, it was it was raised when we put it up. So even though I think Fury beats Usyk, I mm. think that's huge. I think he's a natural heavyweight. You know, he's awkward. He's he's got so much weight on him. He's he's just you know six foot nine. He's huge. Uh, even though I think Fury beats Usyk, mm. Usyk deserves a pound for pound list above Fury for me for his accolades yeah. to move up to heavyweight to yeah. be undisputed. Uh, to have the best amateur pedigree possible, you know, to have hundreds of fights, win the Olympics, you know, win Super Series, all this, mm. beating good, good guys time and time again, and then to go to heavyweight and be Anthony Joshua, who was, you know, really probably a 60-40 fight with Fury. Um, that's huge. But Usyk's above the pound for pound list, but I think Fury beats him in a fight, mm. if, if you can understand that, you know. It's stars, stars make fights. Mm -hmm. And you feel feel that way. I think um, I can see why Fury will win that fight. I can certainly see the size difference is incredible. You see a man that's used to be two hundred pounds. That that can box that well. That can box well. that well. But going against a guy who's 200, 270 pounds, two hundred fifty, two hundred seventy pounds, I think he weighs in. So, you know, the weight difference is, is there. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see it. I, I think. I, th I think Usyk for me is uh, Usyk for me is a great fighter, but I think he's a bit small for the f for the Tyson Fury side of things. So I think yeah, I, think, I agree with you. I think he beats Tyson Fury. Yeah. Uh, so I think Tyson Fury beats him. Uh, but you, you, sorry, Tyson Fury and Joshua would be a cracking fight. Yeah. Hopefully, Stars hopefully made fights. Made. Yeah, hopefully that gets made. So just go going into your onto your fifth one, fifth and final. You've gone for Errol Spence Jr., which is uh, which is quite interesting. He hasn't fought in quite a while. Um, well, he's had one fight in the last year. That's pretty much it. But when was his last fight? Was it? Was it, it last summer? I can't remember. Yeah, well, remember. I'm pretty sure it was against Garcia, right? Yeah. Yeah. Garcia, so even looking at that, so after coming off of crashing his Ferrari or whatever, at 120 miles an hour, you know, being in critical care. Before that and after, he's proved that he's still up there amongst the best. Like he. If you ever look at a fight and you're seeing why they're winning, Errol Spence is always instigating the fight. He's mm. dominating. He's always first in the exchange. He's always last. Yeah. Like the way he dominates every single opponent, even even world class opponents. You know, even because if you look at his resume of his last five fights, it's incredible. Um, and for that reason, I, I think he's he deserves top five. But saying that. It's so tough putting this list together because mm. you have got guys like Josh Taylor that could very easily be, you know, your your number two, three, four, or five because in his last five fights, he's he's beaten a record of something like 136 wins and zero losses out of his last five fights. So, you know, what what a guy. But yeah, I think back to Spence and Crawford. I got, it's I'm one not... of the toughest divisions out there yeah. and they are the two biggest names there you know the lightweight division the weight division hmm. and the heavyweights you know they're sort of they're the most discussed and okay. for, to be at the top of it I think he deserves number five okay it's interesting because he hasn't fought since um, December 2020 oh, okay. so it's been so quite it's been, a while been a year yeah so I just had a quick look so it's been what is it uh, so when I said summer it was Australian summer yeah, <laughs> yeah. you get that a summer sense. all year round there don't you I uh, had double winter <laughs> coming back did you really yeah winter oh, in Australia mate. and then I come back in October to a winter in yeah tragic. you deserve that mate yeah <laughs> <laughs> no so for my number five I've gone for Josh Taylor fair um what a run he's been on I think you told me earlier he's I, I just said it while she was on what, your phone. what was it sorry 136 and 0 100, 136 in and 0 in his last 5 so uh, yeah 136 and 0 in his last 5 fights um, his last fight at Romero's was for the undisputed title um, and now he's got a big fight coming up and is that undisputed at 15 fights has he had is it 15 I think no I think he's had more than that 18, 19 something like that okay yeah because I think as well he's undisputed at the smallest amount of fights yeah at, at that character like he's broken a lot of records a mm. lot of records yeah so for me i've gone for number five josh taylor. i think he gets underlooked a lot 
as a fight. I, think, I don't think so. I think in the sports personality of the year, how he didn't get voted, how he didn't get, you know, even get a mention, I think that's disgusting. But that's political. That's, that's, that's you know, you look at all the organisations in boxing that are toxic. That's them. But if you look at from but fans' I'm, perspective... I'm talking about sports personality of the year. Yeah, but like even... He, he should have, he should... If you see... Okay, you got... Didn't uh, Tyson he, Fury say if he gets nominated, he's going to sue him? And yeah, he, And he yeah, got nominated. And he got nominated, <laughs> yeah. He had a year before as well, which is funny. But if you see the athletes that got... Some of the athletes that got s selected, who's that uh, tennis player who, who won the... Aus is it Australian Open? Well, it's not but Djokovic you, because he, he got kicked no, out. No, the, uh, the female um, f British athlete. But yeah, she, she won it that year. Um, but Josh Taylor definitely deserved the mention there. I feel. I think he gets underlooked by a lot. Even even after he won that title, he should have had press all over him. Yeah. He didn't get any of that. Because Josh Taylor's obviously, you know, at 140, mm -hmm. he's in between the lightweights and the welterweights, you know, like 147, 135. Yeah. Like, I, I seriously think he's got some very big, juicy money fights that he can take. And yeah, I think he beats most people. Obviously, uh, Ben Davison, uh, he's got, who has he got in his stable? He's got Devin Haney. He helps Devin any year when he yeah. goes over and camp. He's got Josh Taylor. Yeah. He's got the McCormack brothers. Yeah. He's yeah. got uh, um, Aziz. I think it's Aziz. One Dan Aziz? The, I can't remember. He's got one of the Azizes in his camp. Um, and look at the work Josh Taylor's getting. Yeah. You know, like just, I think his... his Congo coach, as well. Congo's joined well, there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, he, you know, he's around such talent all the mm. time he's got so many people coming in for sparring obviously mtk performance like mikey yeah. said he went there for sparring and that but i, I think it's his time and mm. he's, he's young as well he's young he's not had that much wear and tear he's he's open to a lot of big fights coming up yeah he's 30 he's 31 30, yeah 30 31 something along that i think you know from my personal preference what i like to see is after you know if he gets past catchall which is a tough fight, you know. People are overlooking Catchell. Mm -hmm. uh, let's not forget, he's a, it's a very good fight against against him. If he gets past this, I can see the winner staying one more fight at this weight against a Tiafimo Lopez, something like that, just to prove. Be a big money fight. Big money fight, and then step up, but and then, you can go why, against the Crawfords. But why does Tio deserve a shot straight away after coming off a loss at one three five? Yeah, because it is the undisputed. Well so-called undisputed champion at 135 big money fight as you said yeah I guess um, and this sport's about money right uh, I can see I can see why maybe Teofimo's had one warm up but I can't see do you really think Teofimo's going to come to to Britain <laughs> to, to box in well Scotland why not well, if, if you're, if you're ever... a champion no. Eubanks Eubank will you know has just gone into Cardiff how many Americans can do what Crawford did like not many Americans will come over the seas, you know, against not just a, a fighter, but you're going to be against the judges. You're going to be against all of, you know, you're, you're in complete foreign territory. But, but Ash, and, that, that, that's how but, you prove you're a great fighter. But then do you Errol think Spence Lopez did will it. do it? Do you think Lopez will do it? Why not? If you're a fighter, if you're a fighter, man, you want something, you want to become undisputed, you want to become a champion, you have to do this. You have to go against this or there's, I don't no, even there's think, no point. I don't even think Lopez, I think he would make Josh Taylor go out there and I don't think the fight would be made. I, I, I can Lopez see why would Josh Taylor America. would go out there. Josh, why wouldn't Josh Taylor go out there? Of course he would. Yeah, you know, he's a, he's, army. He's a it, it yeah, yeah, mate, they'll go out for him. They'll go out for him. I mean, they missed out against the Ramirez fight because of lockdown, unfortunately. Yeah. So they all love to go out there. But if 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 they can get Lopez down to say, listen, we, we'll do the fight, but come to the UK, why wouldn't Lopez do it? He Part would have to prove he's a champion. After coming off a loss, why would he travel out of America and have that pressure on him against you know an undisputed one forty pounder? I yeah. think. Yeah, of course, Lopez thinks he's the man, but as soon as the contract has to be, like, we're going to talk about the heavyweights now and how contracts don't get signed and how mm. annoying it is, but mm. I don't think Lopez would ever sign a contract to come overseas and do that. Why, why would you fight Josh Taylor in his, back, in his backyard? Like, it's, it's such a big risk after coming off a loss, yeah. especially his dad. It's true. It's true. Um, if you look at the I champions... I'd love to see it. I'd love yeah. to see it. Errol Spence did it. Terence Crawford did it. Um, they're the two names that come to my to my mind straight away. So if he wants to be considered a, a true great, which, he, I, which I think he wants do to it, do, then, then fair play. Yeah, exactly. Fair yeah. play. So, so we'll see what it is. Not just boxing, are here to thank our proud sponsors, ETS. Yep, Eco Technology Solutions, specialise in repair of laptops, tablets and mobile phones. Uh, they're a leading repair company in the southeast. So if you use the code FIX with not just boxing, you'll get 25% off with them. Their details are in the description below and their website will be up and running soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Heavyweights, let's talk 
why are, what do you want to talk heavyweights what do you want to talk about heavyweights <laughs> <laughs> why are contracts not being signed people are sick of it like you've got to admit after AJ Fury falling through mm. after Dillian White Tyson Fury that's been announced nearly falling through yep. now this paper being sent why is nothing being signed why is why is there you got Eddie Hearn speaking you got Fury speaking you got White not saying that much really but why is this not happening? People are sick of it. It's, it's ruining the sport. Why can't they just set a date, set a time, especially mm -hmm. if you say you're a fighting man? Yeah. Like, you know, you're being robbed of our generation's biggest heavyweight clashes. Mm -hmm. Fury AJ, you know, could have been signed so many times. You had a rematch clause happen. People are losing patience. That's the thing. I think these are big money fights. There's a lot at stake, a lot to lose. Um, that's the only reason why I can see why the fights are not being made at the moment. Obviously, if potentially if you look at it, if if Joshua was to lose or Fury was to lose, they could be earning from one fight 89, 80 million, shall we say, just on top of my head. Then they lose that fight, they'll drop down to twenty million. Well, no, it'd be a rematch clause. Yeah, no, I'm just saying if the rematch clause, you know, the well, it was still money will still drop because instead of going. I don't know, 60, 40, then but they're on the Fury, vice versa. Fury AJ will make hundreds of millions like yeah. that. Bit, yeah. but I'm just thinking money side of things. It's the and, 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 and it's people it's talking. Eddie Hearn and Bob Arum. Yeah, they're talking a lot in the public, whereas they should, you know, like, I remember Eddie Hearn when um, Tyson Fury and Joshua got a fight. Do you remember this? All, all you hear is, is him in the newspaper. It's going to happen. We're going to have an announcement next week. Oh, no, it's going to happen next week. We're going but to hear something at the end of the week. You can't believe anything now until there's a contract signed and yeah. there's a venue date. I, I think that was the biggest problem is that he gave people false hope. As much as I love Eddie Hearn, I think he's brilliant. I think during that time he gave people false hope. But um, also in his mind, he thought it was a done deal. He thought it was a done deal, but then just wait, wait until the contract. Like, like he did it with Taylor and Serrano. Mm -hmm. like, there was no mention also, of, oh, it's going to happen until the fights actually see you. But like, obviously, AJ's coming off a loss now of Usyk. Let's say he beats Usyk and he gets his belts back. Mm. If he doesn't beat Usyk, we've been robbed off of a mega fight. And the fight is still undisputed. Yeah, yeah, but it's going to be it's like still. a Khan versus Brook. It's going to be way too late. What There's going to be less on the line. Yeah, of course, it's good on a British level, but it would have been a world mega fight. And mm. you've only had one Brit to have all the belts, Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis, yeah. And no, no Brit, I don't think, has had all four belts. So you well, know, it's, it's, history... it's only recently been a four belt era. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's why I'm mean. so like for that to happen in the heavyweight division and for us to be robbed of it at such a time, like it's 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 tragic. Mm. <laughs> it's so sad. It's true. Yeah, no. Um, like I said, the fight, even if it, even if it, they're, they're both losing their next fight, for example, you know, if they, even if they do fight, it'll still be huge. It'd be like a Deontay Wilder and anti Joshua fight. It'll still be huge, right? Yeah, but it's just, um, it's not the same. Because of the beef. It's not the same. Not the it's same. not the same. But you could say the same about Kel and Brooke, Ke um, Khan and Brooke. Yeah, but in all honesty, I'm excited for Khan and Brooke, but I'm not as excited as I would have been five years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. So that's the impression that... It's a shame. It's You're going to buy in, but, you know, you want to see them in their prime. Okay, so let's talk upcoming fights. Yeah. So next one, Khan versus Brooke. Yeah, cracking fight. Can't wait for that one. Uh, can't wait for that. But a fan of big, you know, both fighters grew up watching them. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of people say it's too late the fight, but it's happening. They both don't like each other. They don't like each other. Uh, there's a genuine rival the rivalry there. We think um, it is too late. It is too late, but hmm. everyone still wants to see it. It is on on a British. It's, it's like level. a Mayweather Pacquiao. Everyone thought. No one thought that. Maybe people did think it was too late, but it happened still. Mm. Um, I wouldn't go that far though, because Mayweather Pacquiao is like. I don't know, Mayweather Pacquiao. Different level. Yeah, completely yeah, different. different that, level. That's like world class. And now we've got two guys coming off a lot of losses with they're, a lot of damage. They're world class, but then there's another level, elite level. Yeah. And Pacquiao and Mayweather have seen in that level. Um, but going back to this fight is, I, you know, it's two great styles. It's, what makes it so great is you've got a puncher and you've got someone who's got great timing in Cal Brook. And you've got Amir Khan, who's got all the boxing skills, all the footwork and the speed. Good combination puncher. Good combination punches, but leaves his chin up in the air mm -hmm. when he throws multiple combinations. So, you you know, there's that argument, like, if Puz calbert has got good timing, or he's had good timing, will that will that go in his favour against someone like Khan? Um, so it's going to be a really interesting fight. And, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I'm mm -hmm. really looking forward to it. Even though people say it's past it, 
It's a general rivalry because the person who loses from this fight does it does it cause it's got, it's does got it a, cause a dent in their legacy? Uh, no, well, you, you see, you're, you see the, you're, you're, you're at the end of your career, you know, it, it, like you, when once, let's fast forward 10, 20 years, mm. once you look at their highlights and their best bits, you know, and unfortunately Amir Khan's highlights, what, Madonna maybe? <laughs> but no, Madonna fight, Devin, uh, Devin Alexandra against Katownik when he won the world title. But how, how long Barrera? ago was this? How long ago was this? He was this? 22. The, his pro- what, 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 uh, because he had speed, I think his prime was you know, quite young. Well, up to about 24, maybe. I'm trying to think who, I can't remember what age he fought Devin Haney, but he fought Devin Haney and then he just kept chasing this Mayweather and Pacquiao fight. And that took two, three years away from his career. And then he chased the Canelo fight. And that obviously that was a, not, not the best thing for his career. And but just him going to America in general. He conquered America. Uh, but yeah, when you look it. at Khan, what an amazing career. For him to go to America to fight these, the biggest names. Yeah like active in his division yeah um fair play to him like he's, he's got some big balls he's yep. got some massive balls yeah, yeah yeah yeah. but then you know you gotta look it's khan sort of not khan brook because he's quite envious of that like he didn't get that opportunity maybe uh, and maybe that that's what khan says now he says kel brooks is quite envious because he didn't do the things that i did but is he saying this because it's pre-fight hype maybe quite possibly yeah quite possibly but from our point of view do you think that i don't think so I think Cal Brooks done brilliant in his career. Yeah, I think Brooks is an amazing fighter. Mm. He's, 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 he's he a world class fights, fighter that didn't get the fights. Yeah, but he did. And I think a lot of it, when you see about it, is down to his dedication. He's not always been the most fittest, the most dedicated. He's outside you of life. that. I've seen some of his camps and it is. Yeah, but that's when he's in camp. But outside uh, of camp, how's his lifestyle? Okay. You know, he balloons up. You see him, he, 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 you know, he balloons up quite a bit. And he's quite a big 147. Mm hmm. Um, you know, maybe the best thing for his career was to jump up to one five four, maybe. But he didn't want to. He didn't want to do that because he felt he didn't feel he had the strength, the power, and stuff which he had at one four seven. But as we were saying with the nutritionist we had on, hmm. like you need to fight your natural weight, otherwise you're just you're depriving yourself he, of your he, performance. He, Cal Brook had a nutritionist. Yeah, he, he had a nutritionist, but he kept wanting to drop that extra pound and power. And as you get older, that gets tougher. Especially, he jumped up to. Um, Golovkin's weight, Golovkin's middleweight. Yeah, was it one sixty? Yeah. yeah, he jumped up to that for one four seven. So again, st- big balls, st- big balls. Yeah, you know, mate, to, they're both. To go against Golovkin was the pound for pound best for yeah. years, and to go against Golovkin, most avoided man. Yeah, and to to box as beautifully as you did until he got caught. You know, fair play to him. And I, I think this fight coming up, of course, is a, it is too late, mm. even though it's going to be amazing. It's more who's still got it in him, who's got a bit of fight left, hmm. who's had the better camp, who, who's not as broken. Um, and, you know, you, you see their injuries they've had in the past, some very, very difficult injuries to overcome. Um, it's, it's tough. And, you know, as soon as the fight ends, whoever loses, they're going to be open about all their injuries and how hard mm, it's been with gonna, their training. Yeah, they're going to say it's harder. They're going to make it... Well, every fighter... You tend to hear it more and more. But, Fighters making excuses. But broken eye socket, you know, yeah. like, what's the cure for a broken eye socket? It's there is no cure, is it? That's going to that's gonna be with him for the rest of the life. It's not one broken eye socket, it's two. Yeah. Um, so... What do yeah. you predict? I think, as you said, it's the fighter that's got the most left in their tank now. If you see Khan, Khan's losses have come, or his fights have come with just one punch and he's been knocked out. Now, does that have an effect on your career? as much as consecutive punches. So like Cal, Bro- Cal Brooks has, a, has had tough fights, but he's had consecutive damage in there. I remember the fight against the American that come down, that he fought twice. I can't remember his name now, Purdy or something. And you know, first one was, was a Heldinger. And then he brought on a nutritionist and strength conditioning. He come back a different fighter. So that takes a lot of but mileage. Brooks always been in fighter. shape. Brooks always been in tremendous shape. No, he hasn't. He's always no, been- No, 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 it's like at the end of camp. camp. At the end of camp, when he goes into a fight, Physically, he looks great. Yeah, physically like, he looks great, but you know the toll that it has on his body, the camp. Exactly that. That that can have an effect. Into the, whereas Khan's always, you know, he, he was a lightweight, and he obviously jumped up to one one fifty five, whatever he boxed at. But so who? Khan or Brook? Yeah. Um, for me, I have to go Amir Khan. I think he the speed is still with him, but not as not as uh, speed as as he did have. Not as better as footwork, I think it's slowed down as well, but I think he's got more left in the tank than Kelbrook. 
So I'm going to go Khan on points. Nice. I'm probably going to go with Brooke. Okay. I keep changing, like, my mindset. I don't know. So I don't know how it's going to go so down. Is... But I'm calling Brooke. What do you reckon? I don't think it goes the distance. Really? I don't yeah, think I it goes... So I'm going to say Brooke stoppage. Um, don't know how it's going to go, but, yeah, I, I think Brooke's got it in the tank, so... Great. Nice. Uh, and then next, yeah. Mikey McKinson, Virgil hmm. Ortiz. We had him on obviously recently. Yeah. This is a huge fight. Whoever wins this gets a world title shot. Well, they're they're um they're in line to get a world title shot. Whether they get it next, you, or you'll not. be a mandatory. Yeah. You'll if be you win this. Yeah. So, obviously, Mikey. He sounds like he's having the camp of his life. He's got amazing. You know, he's got a physio on board, nutritionist. Strip he's had a camp since November. You know, he, he's been in shape already for three months. Yeah, he said he was prepared. So th this fight, a uh, little background behind this, is that he knew about the fight since November, right? I think Yeah. Uh, November time. So he's had time to prepare for this training camp and get ready for it. And I think the fight was officially announced in December, January, yeah. December, I think. Yeah. So he's, you know, he's had time to prepare, get ready. Um, so, so I've not, you know, it, 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 since we've seen him, he looks good, he looks healthy, he looks strong. Uh, and Virgil Ortiz, you know, we've we've been hearing stories that he hasn't had the best best of camps. You know, he, well, he's he's been sw switching trainers, switching coaches. Trainers. Um, yeah. What do you say about Canelo's camp? Didn't have time for him. Yeah. So originally he was with Robert Garcia. Yep. Uh, Mikey Garcia's brother, uh, and then there was some there was some um, how can you put it? Did it altercations. I, I guess, yeah, altercations. He wanted him to go on a, one of his fights, but he didn't go. He sent his assistant, and Ortiz wasn't happy with that, so. He trained, trained trainers to um, Eddie, Canelo, Reynoso. Eddie Reynoso. But Eddie Reynoso, unfortunately, the, the, the schedule clashed. So he couldn't go train with him as well. And now he's gone with... Um, Andy Ruiz's old coach. Andy Ruiz's old coach. So um, it's interesting. Yeah. You know, there could be some uncertainty in the background. I know his dad's trained, been training him as well. So he's got his dad there and he's got... Um, Andrew is his old coach. I can't remember his name. Sorry. Let's let's not be obviously biased because we we've spoke with Mikey. Of course, Virgil Ortiz is a nasty knockout puncher. 18, 18 fights, 18, 18 knockouts. Hundred percent ratio. Yeah, he's that's not, uh... you know when you look at his knockouts as well, you know he doesn't just knock them out. He sleeps them. You know he's he's yeah. got a lot of power. He's a very very good boxer, but mm. he's never fought anyone with an O. He's he's never boxed anyone undefeated. He's never boxed an awkward southpaw like Mikey. And yeah. I just think it's a boxer versus puncher. That Traditional, we spoke yeah, about. boxer puncher, yeah. And in my opinion, you look at like Fury versus Wilder, or yeah, I can't even really name too many, but I always favor the boxer. I feel like if you put on a masterclass on the night, especially even though Mikey's not got a high knockout ratio, he's dropped a lot of guys. You know, he's a right-handed southpaw, so he's got a very good lead hand. Hmm. You know, he's, yep. he's, he's dropped a few people with that. There's no reason why he can't go there and show the world up yet again. Well, what I would say about that is Virgil Ortiz, 18 fights, 18 knockouts. Now, when you get to that stage, we've seen it before. We've seen it before with punchers like George Foreman uh, when he fought against Muhammad Ali. We saw um, quite recently Deontay Wilder when he fought Tyson Fury. Is These high knockout punchers... Is when they get they rely a lot on the power of knockouts and then when it gets later in the fight yeah so what happens is when they rely on that knockout power is when you face tricky awkward fighters like um obviously muhammad ali was different back then he just stood and took the shots and he tied him up mentally but if if you see fury he was making him miss yeah and, and he, uh, he doesn't uh, land clean as well yeah like, and only mikey a got, um, uh, michael mckinson's very similar it's very hard to land clean on the kid so you got to see, like, mentally, when he when he gets to that stage, when he realizes he can't just knock this kid out, he has to think of something different. How would that affect him mentally? And by then, how late in the rounds is it when you're maybe down on the scorecards and your psychology is, you know, shifting? You're shifting. Um, so th that is a big part on it. So you got to see, like, when he gets to this stage, but it, it probably will happen. Yeah. Where Virgil Ortiz has to show something different in the fight. Whether it's not Mikey, you know, when he is stepping up to the Crawfords, the Spences, the Connor Benz, yeah, like. It is, it is going to be a very, very tough... Uh, every, all of these fights are close. They are all close fights. It depends who's got the better camp, the better game plan. Mm. You know, if you put Mikey and Virgil Ortiz in five fights simulated, you know, there'll be different outcomes every time, probably. Mm. Same as if you put Spence and Crawford. So I think right now, with what we know, Mikey's having the camp of a lifetime. 
and I, I'm just favouring him. I, I love an underdog. Yeah. But look, as I was, you know, as I was saying, I think there's there's a lot behind it as well in the puncher and the boxer. So I, I think we're going to look at how how you know how Virgil Ortiz were coping this situation. And Mikey, you know that he's got 12 rounds behind him. Yeah, We've goes, seen it. Goes the distance. Whereas time, Virgil yeah. Ortiz, he's, he, he hasn't really shown that side of things. And Ortiz has never gone the distance. How is Ortiz going to go 12 rounds in this fight? No one knows. Yeah. I don't think he's ever been past the eighth, I want to say. I could be wrong. But, you know, to go 12 rounds, you know, they're the championship rounds. You ask anyone, you ask Fury in that, that got heart. Yeah. Again, that takes a whole complete fire. Like, I will never know what that's like. You know, it's, you can only Hopefully imagine. in the future, man. Hopefully yeah. in the future. You never know, but probably yeah. not. Like, I, to be fatigued, to be fighting for 30 minutes against a world-class opponent. and have No, 30 on the 10th oh, round. Oh, in the 10th round. And then you've got two more rounds and you've never even gone that far. You're going to have doubts in your mind. You, you, know, you can do it inspiring, you yeah. can do it wherever, but doing it for real is completely different, and isn't it? for Mikey that's been there, if he can take him the distance and he can fight his fight, you know, it's it's good. Mike's so, been ten ten rounds as the highest he's been. Yeah, but obviously he always he, he's been training. He's got he's 12. gone to ten he's rounds. He's yeah. gone to ten. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's it's very exciting. I think uh, it could go either way. Of course, Ortiz he's a huge favourite. Yeah. Um. But you got to back our boy, and I, I think yeah. he can do it. And seen on some of Virgil Ortiz's interviews is uh, he's got the attitudes that he doesn't really. He's overlooking him. He doesn't. Yeah, it seems like he's overlooking him. And again. When you ever look any fighter, that can um, that can come back and you know go against you. And so he's uh, you know I hope he's out there training hard because he, he'll need to against someone like Mikey. Um, but yeah, I'm very much looking forward f for the fight. Um, it's going to be a good fight, and as I said, the best man hopefully will win. Um, on predictions, who do you reckon? Uh, I'm going to say if he doesn't get robbed, Mikey on points. I mm. think that's uh, that's a smart. Smart move, but very, very, again, it could go either way. Could go either way. Yeah, great. What about great. you? I think the smart money, you'd have to go with Ortiz. Um, just if you look at his record, if you look at what he's done. But I've got this, just this doubt in my mind that seeing the interviews of Virgil Ortiz, you know, the, the troubles, you know, it's only, you know, you don't know what troubles he's going through in camp. If that's had a big influence on him, because he's he's if you see his ego, like he's been to one coach who didn't want to take his corner because he had to go with someone else, another coach that didn't have time for him. How does that affect his ego? Mm -hmm. And now he's he's gone for third sort of coach option. So you know all these things can have an effect on you mentally. So I I, I think there's a there's a chance for Mikey McKinson to you know as long as he's switched on his game plans there, he's awkward. He can certainly win this fight on points. Yeah. So um, I'm in two minds, but I think Mikey, Mikey can certainly win this fight. Yeah, and then he gets his name out there and he can propel then himself he, he, for a he, world he title. Does what he can do what he wants well, after As that. he said, he wants to go represent Fratton Park. He wants to be the first fighter to go sell out Fratton Park for a boxing show. And he can do it. And he, he can, can do he, it. If he can beat someone like Ortiz, the amount of, you know, the amount of name he gets, not just in Pumpy, but in, in the world, how his name will spread is, you know, he can do what he wants after that, really. Yeah, um, but nothing but respect for both fighters. They're both extremely talented. Yeah. Could go either way. It's the same, same with Khan Brook, you know. I know it's the end of their careers and, you know, it's a bit late, but you've got two very talented guys and boxing wins again, you know. We're going to see some brilliant fights hmm. and the undercards of these fights as well. There's some serious talent. So, um, yeah, I'm excited, mate. There's a lot going on the next yeah. month. Yeah, so we look forward to watching it. Thank you very much for listening to our uh, podcast today. Um, we've got loads more coming up, so please stay tuned. Thank you.